All right, we're at the top of the hour, so we are going to get started. Welcome everyone to the introduction to JIRA Align webinar. Uh, we are going to spend the next hour talking uh, all things JIRA Align and taking a look at the tools firsthand. Um, I am Vicki Murphy. I'll be your host for this hour. I am an enterprise solutions engineer with Valientis, which is a platinum solutions partner with uh, Atlassian, and we are one of their Atlassian certi or, uh, Agile certified partners as well. I also have on the call with me today uh, one of my team members, Rihanna. She's going to be helping out by sending some links to you in the chat. So keep an eye on that for any of the resources I mentioned throughout uh, this webinar. A little bit about what we're going to cover today. Uh, I have a couple of slides to show you just to talk about some concepts with Jira Line, some ideas that are good to wrap our heads around um, and see some diagrams around before we jump into the tool. Then we will be doing a live demo for the majority of this time, and we'll have some Q&A time at the end. So if you have any questions throughout this hour, please put them in the Q&A panel in Zoom, and we will get to as many of those as we can at the end of the hour. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some of these concepts. Um, starting with the positioning of JIRA Align, because it is a bit more unique than some of the other Atlassian products. JIRA Align really is designed for organizations that have implemented or in the process of implementing a framework for a scaled Agile. Common ones are the SAFE framework or uh, the Spotify model. Um, and we really find organizations are most successful with implementing JIRA Line when they've been through at least one uh, program or planning increment. And uh, really what we see uh, that leading to is just a little bit of an ease on the end users. It's a lot to <clears throat> excuse me, to learn a brand new process and a new tool. It also helps you uh, and your organization feel more comfortable with the process, which is going to play into the configuration of the tool. There's a lot of decisions that need to be made to make sure that the tool works best for your process. So if you have a little bit of that process under your belt, um, it just makes the configuration uh, a little bit easier and potentially a little bit of a faster time frame as well. Um, something that you will hear anytime you hear anyone talk about JiraLine is that it is a large scale tool and it is designed for large enterprises. Um, Atlassian puts the number of 500 developers is really the scale of the organizations that JiraLine is designed for. Um, because it is this larger scale enterprise tool, it does come at a bit of a higher price point than the other Atlassian tools. Um, we do uh, uh, believe that smaller organizations may struggle with either the scale of the tool or potentially the high price point or both. If you feel like you might be in that boat after this uh, presentation, don't worry. There are other options in the Atlassian ecosystem for you. I'm going to talk about some of those and mention some additional resources around those today as well. Um, and really, uh, when we talk about Jira Line and what it was designed for, um, from a technical perspective, it was really designed to help us connect our strategy to our execution across the enterprise and support the various planning activities we do at each level across the organization as well. We've really seen JIRA Align help organizations empower their teams by making work visible across the enterprise in real time and align work to purpose, getting everyone on the same page so we're able to align what we are doing at each level up to that top uh, enterprise strategy. So I'm going to talk a lot about that concept throughout this webinar. All right. I realize I was just on mute. Um, Brianna, have I been on mute the whole time? No, nope, it just cut out for okay. some for some reason. So yeah, if you just want Thank to start you. back on the slide, you're good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, what your line was really designed for technically and what it really helps us do is sync uh, three different hierarchies across our enterprise. And we like to group these into the idea of people, work and time. If you really think about work at a very high level, um, it all boils down to this. What work are we doing? Who is doing that work? And in what time frame are they attempting to accomplish that work in? 
Um, and so I really love showing this diagram before getting into the tool because I think it helps paint a mental image of what JIRA Align is really doing. Um, so as we're clicking around the tool in just a little bit, you have uh, something to kind of connect that to um, and, and a, a picture that you can uh, imagine the background of the tool in. So let's just walk through this briefly. Um, when we talk about uh, the idea of people, that's that uh, the hierarchy over here on the left. So we have the enterprise uh, tier. This is typically our top leadership, CEOs, et cetera. Um, and then we boil down and into our portfolio, uh, into uh, potentially a solution layer if you need it. The tool does have that capability, though it is not commonly needed. Um, and then we also have our program, that team of teams level. Uh, this is where we see the tool really shine, bringing those teams together, helping them plan their work. Uh, and then we have that agile team level as well. Um, and I'm going to come back to this idea of Jira Line and Jira Software in just a moment, but let's finish walking through these hierarchies. When we talk about the work these folks are doing, uh, top tier enterprise level, we're talking strategy. We break that strategy down into our strategic themes that may span um, you know, a year or more. We break that down into our idea of a portfolio epic. I, a lot of uh, teams or a lot of organizations call this an initiative that spans multiple quarters or program increments, potentially a year or more. Uh, and then we break that down into our features. And these features are really intended to be around a, um, a PI or a quarter long um, and can be accomplished by a single program. And that gets broken down into our stories and our tasks by our agile teams. And of course, all of these groups are working in different time frames. We talk about a strategic snapshot. That's typically a year or multiple years where we're comparing our strategy. We have that idea of a program increment or a quarter, eight to 12 weeks. And then the idea of our sprints and our releases um, that are in a smaller cadence typically. Um, JiraLine also has several business vectors that can plug into each of these layers of scale, the idea of product management, OKRs, budget, et cetera. And what we are going to see when we get into the tool, you're going to see a lot of these terms come up again, and uh, uh, we will see that it really does help us connect our work uh, up and down these hierarchies all throughout the enterprise. Um, coming back to this left-hand side, the idea of Jira Align and Jira Software, Jira Align really is intended to layer with um, or kind of on top of at least one uh, Jira Software uh, 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 instance, potentially multiple instances, and it could also be another team tool like Azure DevOps. And a little bit of the history here, when Jira Line was first created, it was a product called Agile Craft. It was intended to be the full stack tool where everyone worked within that one platform. Um, as we, uh, uh, or a few years ago, um, I think six years ago, maybe, uh, Atlassian acquired Agilecraft and turned it into Jira Align. And what they really found was that the team tool that Atlassian had already created, Jira Software, was really a stronger platform for teams. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. The uh, ability for teams to work off of the Agile boards, create their own dashboards, JQL filters, and the uh, high level of integration possibilities with other tools like repo uh, code repositories, uh, CI, CD pipelines, et cetera, really does lend Jira software uh, to being the superior team tool. And as we start planning above that, it, Jira Line really helps us extend that coordination that teams have in Jira software up into that program and portfolio tiers. So really, as we're talking about Jira Line, we're going to focus mostly on these upper layers program on up to enterprise. But just know all of the data that we see at these layers is really driven by that Jira software uh, team layer here. So as teams are working in Jira software work, Zoom is uh, being very uh, fun to work with today. Um, apologies for that. Uh, as teams are working in Jira software, creating their work, planning it out, if they're running sprints, starting and stopping their sprints, um, and moving work through the workflow until it is completed, all of that data is driving up into those higher levels of scale, helping us connect our strategy to our execution. All right. 
Just a couple other tidbits about Jira Line before we jump into the tool. When we talk about Jira Line, some good things uh, to be aware of. It does have one add-on available currently. It's called Enterprise Insights. This is a data lake that connects to your Jira Align environment that allows you to extract data to plug into a, a BI tool of your choice. It can connect to popular BI tools like Power BI, Tableau, um, several others uh, that you may have. Um, and it also now connects to Atlassian Analytics. So if you're on that, uh, enterprise tier of Atlassian Cloud, uh, you are able to connect uh, your Jira line data into Atlassian Analytics. Um, the Atlassian development team is pouring a lot of effort into Jira lines. We have a lot of exciting new and upcoming updates. Um, they have over the last several months launched a new uh, navigation UI that is uh, in its final stage. They are rolling back the uh, legacy UI over the next few releases. Um, there's also the ability to forecast by feature, a capacity planning module that we will take a look at today that is new. And they continue to update the API 2.0 as well as uh, the Jira connector uh, between Jira Software and Jira Line to make the tool even more powerful and faster. Um, we do put out a, uh, a video for every release of Jira Line that Atlassian does, just breaking it down, letting you know any updates you may need to be aware of or anything you may need to change as an administrator in the tool. Um, so uh, Brianna has kindly put a link to that playlist in the chat. Feel free to check that out. Um, we try to get it out as soon as uh, Atlassian releases a new version of their release notes. All right. As we're talking about Jira Line, and you may be more and more interested in implementing it, it's good to just be aware of really the overall Jira Line implementation process. Typically, we find implementations taking uh, from three to six months, depending on how fast you want to move. We start with a single pilot program, that team of teams level. Um, and again, we start there because all of the data that you are going to see at the higher levels of the tool, as you see some of the shiny diagrams and shiny metrics that, that I'm going to demonstrate, it's all driven from the team uh, data. And so we want to make sure that we have a set of teams that are working appropriately in Jira software, feeding that data appropriately into Jira line. Um, we will go through that three to six month period. We will uh, uh, go through discovery and planning, configuration of the environments, training, and then ultimately typically leading up to a PI planning. It's kind of the launch of Jira Align frequently. Um, and uh, from there, we of course want to iterate on anything we need to expand into further uh, programs and expand upwards into the portfolio as well. Um, and this is really the typical implementation path, whether you work with Atlassian or an implementation partner to implement your Align. Uh, real quick before we jump into Jira Line, if at this point you might be thinking that uh, uh, Jira Line maybe is a uh, larger scale tool than you need right now, I do want to mention um, some another option in the Atlassian ecosystem that's available that we see organizations loving as they are going on their scaled uh, uh, planning, scaled agile journey, and that is Advanced Roadmaps. Uh, formerly, uh, that this was called Portfolio for Jira uh, several years ago, um, but what we really see this being useful for is for organizations that are really looking to scale their agile practices. Um, and it's uh, great. At last it says it's uh, really intended for planning um, around 20-ish agile teams. Um, and it really just helps you uh, uh, give visibility, shared focus, and accurate delivery across those teams. You can plan across multiple agile teams and then connect that work up to higher level initiatives as well. Um, advanced roadmaps uh, 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 is wonderful, again, for those kind of growing agile organizations. What we will see today is Jira Line is a bit more robust, has more capabilities around that higher level planning, and can support planning around hundreds uh, of teams or people. Um, Advanced Roadmaps, just to mention, is available in uh, Jira software environments for the cloud platform, um, for the uh, pr uh, premium and enterprise tiers, and also on a Jira software data center. All right, uh, if you are interested in learning more about advanced roadmaps and other options for planning uh, at scale in the Atlassian ecosystem, uh, please do check out our pro uh, project portfolio management with Atlassian webinar. Brianna threw a link to that in the chat as well. Um, it is going to walk through more in depth uh, advanced roadmaps, talks about your align a little bit, as well as a couple other uh, apps out there that can be helpful as well. 
right. And with that, we are going to jump into the demos. Let me get out of the slides here and get into Jira line. Just give this a refresh. All right, so uh, before we, uh, or really how I like to start the demo is just a quick walkthrough of the navigation. I like doing this for two reasons. One, uh, it is a little bit different than other Atlassian tools, though it is becoming more and more similar to things like Jira software. And also, uh, I think it's really kind of helps us map the tool to that hierarchy diagram that I showed. You're going to see a lot of similar terms. You're going to see how it really does help us connect all of those tiers. So we're just going to keep the walkthrough brief. Uh, but starting up here at the top, um, we do have our different tiers of people, if you will. So we see those terms of enterprise, portfolio, program, team, et cetera. Um, we are able to click through all of these, uh, choose the appropriate, uh, they call them teams, like a portfolio team, but choose the appropriate portfolio program, et cetera, um, that we are interested in looking for. From there, we're able to utilize the left-hand panel here that really uh, has the various modules that we may be interested in at this layer of scale. And then we can choose our time frame. So again, connecting the people, the work items that they will be working on at the portfolio level. Again, our epics, for example, are here. Um, and then that idea of time, what program increment is uh, what we're calling it here uh, in our system. Um, uh, we're able to... Uh, Let's, let's talk about a couple other items on here um, and in the navigation bar. Uh, there's a big create button similar to other uh, Atlassian tools. Uh, this, of course, is limited by permissioning, so you can only create the work items that you uh, have permission to. Jumping over to the far right, uh, we are able to search for items in uh, Jira line. It's a little bit different we can, uh, than Jira software. We can search for an ID or keyword of our work items. Um, and uh, uh, it will pull up a list here for us. Um, there are in-app notifications. This is currently specific to Jira line. It is not merged with the other Atlassian cloud tools uh, just yet. Uh, we can input custom checklists to help uh, guide users and how we want them to use the tool through certain ceremonies, certain processes. And one of the uh, uh, pieces of Jira line that I love showing off is the contextual help button. Atlassian has wonderful documentation uh, on Jira Align, and they embed it directly in the tool. So you can click this uh, help button at any time to understand really what module you are looking at, uh, anything from data that it is displaying, prerequisites that need to be in place, et cetera. And this works for everything across Jira Align, uh, uh, visualizations, reports, um, even the administrative panels as well. All right. Now that we've seen kind of that high level walkthrough, uh, I'm just going to uh, jump into uh, uh, really showcasing some of the highlights of the tool. What you will see is there is a lot to Jira line. It really is this robust tool. So we can't cover everything that's in it uh, in an hour, but we're going to focus on those highlights and some of those areas we see immediate wins for organizations whenever they implement Jira Align. All right. And I'm going to start at the top of the hierarchy, and we're going to uh, really kind of talk about that planning aspect. How can we utilize the tool for planning and understanding our work at each layer of scale? So I'm just going to jump into my snapshot. Um, and really, snapshots just enable us to compare uh, work uh, and, and our strategy year over year, time box by time box. You can kind of dictate if you want to do it quarterly, annual, multi-year, et cetera. And the strategy room is one of the areas that you, if you've watched any other demos or information about your line, you've probably seen some images from here. It's uh, got a lot of the popular visualizations. At the very top here, we have our mission, vision, and values. Uh, really, I love that we can in, um, input these directly into the tool, make sure we are aligning everything that we do up to who we are trying to be as an organization. If we scroll down, we have our strategy pyramid. Um, one thing I like to mention here, a lot of the terminology in Jira line is customizable. So as I'm showing things today, if you're thinking, well, we don't call our programs programs, we call them release trains, or, um, you know, we don't call our epics epics, we call them initiatives. All of that is customizable in the tool. So uh, just be aware that uh, we are able to do a bit of uh, customization when it comes to that terminology. 
With the strategy pyramid here, we're able to understand how our work connects up to our, our top levels of strategy. Um, and a little bit more that's customizable here. There's a couple other layers of goals that we can actually plug into uh, this tool. Um, so if you have something in between your uh, yearly goals and your values, if you have you know five-year goals, et cetera, we can add a couple of layers to this pyramid. And what's really great here is we are immediately able to see where we have misaligned work. So this means that we have work items that are not tied up through the hierarchy to be connected to those high level strategy items. And so if we think about setting that uh, multi-year strategy at the top level of our enterprise and wanting to really break work down from there so that it is all supporting and feeding up into that, uh, accomplishing that strategy, when we have misaligned work that isn't connected to that, that's a real thing we want to dig into. Um, and so here we are able to see where we have themes that are misaligned, features that are misaligned, are not connected up into that hierarchy, um, and, and, and maybe something that maybe we just have a link missing, or maybe it's something we shouldn't be focusing on because it's not helping us accomplish that strategy. Scrolling down, here we have uh, the OKR heat map. And the OKR heat map um, really is around our objectives and key results, which the tool does uh, help us with. Um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and talk about uh, a specific objective, and then we can look a little bit deeper into what this OKR heat map is telling us. JiraLine does have uh, objective and key result functionality. It's actually in the process of being updated. So this is the new UI around it here on the right-hand panel. Um, and there's also some uh, updated visualizations around this I will show a little bit later. When we talk about our objectives and key results, it really is designed for that objective to be that high level uh, 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 goal that we are trying to accomplish as an organization. And our key results are really able to represent how are we planning to accomplish that. Um, and with our key results, we're able to apply a metric to those. So here we have our overall objective and our individual key results. And there's several different metrics that you can use. This one's using count. Um, and what we're able to do is called a check-in process. And so it just allows you to be able to provide incremental status updates to achieving these key results. And objectives can really be at any tier of the organization. So at your program, your portfolio, even higher on up. Um, and so you're able to uh, understand really how are we going at accomplishing these objectives at these various levels through this process. And as you check in, uh, it gives you a percentage or a decimal point score here. You can have multiple key results for an objective and it averages those scores together to give you the overall objective score. Furthermore, it lets you connect work items to your objectives as well. So you're able to easily see what features are helping me accomplish this objective uh, what dependencies may be in place, what risks do we have, et cetera. Um, and you're even able to have child objectives if you want to break this down further or show any further relation. Lots of information we can collect about our objectives, everything from the time period we're trying to accomplish this in, start date, due date, um, what's the hierarchy around this objective look like, who are our stakeholders, et cetera. And we even have a status for our objective. So we're able to show, or is this in progress? Are we planning? Has it been canceled, et cetera? So that's what we can do with just an objective itself. Just close that. Um, and if we scroll up here in the strategy room, this OKR heat map averages those objective scores of all objectives within the time period uh, uh, we've selected and tells us how we are going about achieving those objectives. Now, considering we're still in, you know, quarter one and uh, uh <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and going throughout our year here, uh, we're still pretty early in it. The fact that we're uh, uh, achieving a lot already is really great. So kind of having to put into context here, how where are we at in our program increment? Where are we at in our year at achieving these? Um, seeing a lot of red here may be okay at early times of the year and early times of the PI. It may be uh, a, a concern as we are going uh, uh, deeper into the year. Um, and below that, this is the objective, the OKR tree. It just shows that hierarchy. It's how I found the individual objectives as well. 
We see things like our snapshot progress, again, tying in our features, our stories, et cetera, looking all the way down our hierarchy. How are we going at completing our work for this uh, time period? And how are we going at completing our work attached to our goals as well? Also here at the uh, enterprise level, uh, we often find that we are looking at our roadmap. And the roadmap is actually uh, visible at uh, all layers of scale. Select a couple of PIs for us here. Um, and it really just allows us to uh, cast our vision really and uh, understand what we are doing now and what we are doing into the future. So we're able to visualize our various work items um, there's a lot of different visualization options here where we are able to uh, look at just a specific level of work, multiple levels of work, understand where we are at in a specific PI or even in a calendar year here. Really start to cast that vision um, and, and again, just understand where we're at, where we're going, what progress percentage we are at on specific work items, et cetera. We think about planning, uh, once we kind of understand where we're going, we're likely going to want to do some prioritization and some understanding of specific work items. And that is where the backlog can be really helpful. JIRLINE has the backlog module that applies to all levels of work. So there's a backlog for themes, epics, capabilities, features, story, et cetera. Even objectives have a backlog now as well. And within these backlogs, we are able to uh, view them for specific periods of time, specific uh, programs, specific portfolios, or even as a, an enterprise uh, as a whole, which is what I'm looking at here. The backlog allows us to visualize a couple layers of work so we can understand how we are decomposing the work, how much work we are expecting this to be. And then we can drag and drop this work to prioritize it as well. What I'm looking at now is my epic backlog. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And just to show really what a work item in Jira line looks like, the epics have really the most fields available on them. There's a lot of data we can collect. Which if we think about this is usually the tier where we're starting to talk about budgeting, we're starting to talk about forecasting, um, and we, we have a lot of data to collect and input here. I always love pointing out that when you look at the idea of progress, even here at this portfolio epic layer, we're still talking about story points accepted and planned. So we are talking about going all the way down the hierarchy into the team level and rolling up that data again for our teams to, for this data to be meaningful, our teams need to be operating well at the team layer. And that data is speeding up here um, so that we are getting a real understanding at how we are going at executing here. Um, we're able to associate epics to one or multiple uh, programs, one or multiple PIs. Um, Jira line does have a WISGIF uh, module if uh, you are practicing that weighted shortest job first or interested in practicing that. It does have a module where we can plug in the different values that are associated with that calculation and it calculates it for us here so then we can prioritize our backlog. Jiraline also has several different forms of estimation. Points, t-shirt size are the most common, also a couple of time-based estimations as well. Let's just scroll up and we'll take a look at a couple other areas. Um, we are able to design custom intake forms, so you can ask certain questions essentially when we're creating a new uh, epic. Um, on the, uh, uh, let's see, I wanted to go to the spin tab. The spin tab is where we start to see some of the budgeting information in Jira line. Jira line isn't intended to be your budgetary tool of record, but it can be a great resource to understanding how we are tracking against a planned budget um, and where we are looking at um, or estimating we're spending money, forecasting to spend money, et cetera. Again, all the calculations here depend on us working well at our, our team and our program levels, that we are estimating our work, we are ac accomplishing our work at that team level to understand these calculations. We can click into any of these, such as forecasted spend, and get a deeper dive into the calculations. Atlassian has done a lot to really make sure that it's very visible how the tool is calculating this information um, and displaying that for us. Um, one of the uh, uh, metrics you see here is the idea of forecasted spend, and recently Atlassian has uh, been updating their forecast and their capacity planning modules in the tool. 
So now work item by work item at the EPIC capability and feature level, we're able to apply a forecast based on program or team um, to really understand uh, uh, how much we are planning, how much effort we are planning to need from these individual teams throughout the upcoming PIs. And so here you see an individual work item where we are able to uh, plug in different uh, estimates that we are expecting uh, this uh, uh, feature, or sorry, this epic to take. There's a lot of great little sum functionalities as well. And I show this here on the individual epic because the uh, next thing I'm really going to show is the forecasting capacity module. And so here you can see that epic by epic, feature by feature, we're able to plug this information in. And then we can go to a more aggregate view to understand how are we actually uh, uh, doing compared to our capacity. Um, the last thing I'll mention about the backlog here is there's lots of different visualizations. So uh, we could spend really a whole hour talking just about the backlog, but there's a lot of functionality here to really lend itself towards the planning at those various layers of scale. I'm going to jump into the portfolio tier here, and uh, uh, we're just going to kind of work our way down. We'll come back to this portfolio room, uh, but I want to continue on this idea of forecasting into the forecast module. And really what the forecast module uh, is, is it's an, uh, kind of more of a spreadsheet view of all of the epics or features or capabilities if you're using them for a, a program increment. Um, and you're just able to do this sort of bulk forecasting. So you can go work item by work item, as you saw on, uh, on the tab on the uh, epic we just saw, or you can use this view to just plug it in um, plug in each uh, uh, forecasted item or forecasted effort for the items for this PI. What I love about this view is it also starts to show you where you are going over and breaching the capacity. It turns it bright red um, and it even tells you at which epic have you breached that capacity. So um, uh, you're able to say, okay, when we had first two epics planned out, we were good, but when we input the effort for the third, we breached this team's capacity. And you can apply your backlog rank here, so you can go in the rank of that priority order that we have set in the backlog. Um, that's really all there is to the forecasting view. I'm going to switch into the new capacity view. And these two uh, items are very tightly linked. So as we saw in the forecast view, it's looking at that team capacity. Here in the capacity modules where we can dictate what that is. You can view the capacity module at the program level, so looking at the aggregate of all of the programs in a portfolio, or you can dig into a, a specific uh, program. And so I'm actually going to do that really quick by clicking on mobile here. And this is where we can input the information for each team. And so for each team, you can uh, dictate how many um, points per sprint can they do. Uh, and there's several different options. You can use some default options or just input a value if you have a new team. Or maybe there are changes to a team that you need to account for. How many sprints and API are there for this team? How many buffer points do we want to build in? So things like holidays, PTO for several team members, et cetera, may need to be input here. And what's their capacity percentage? Are we trying to protect some capacity for administrative work, for um, unforecasted work that we know will come into the sprint? So we can update that here. And it tells you the available capacity for each team. And then back on that forecast module, you can see that individual team column uh, that tells you where you're going over for each team. Or here we are able to see as a program, so as a team of teams, how are we comparing to our forecast versus our capacity? And you can see it uses some great uh, visual colors here, uh, showing us we are way over um, our forecasted, uh, or, or way over our actual capacity. And I wish I could say that this was an egregious example, but more often than not, when we start to work with organizations and deploying um, these tools, this is what we see at first. We start to see, oh, wow, we are really over planning for these teams. Um, and I think any type of framework will advise you that as you're doing that, it's really setting an unrealistic expectation. And what I have seen is this type of visual really helps leadership, um, even program and portfolio leadership communicate to higher leadership that we're not going to accomplish these things if we are really over planning um, at this scale. Um, and so what can we do to uh, better 
forecast, better uh, uh, take some load off of these teams so they can actually accomplish what we're setting forth. And I've seen that really uh, boost a lot of morale and just help with accurate planning, being able to accurately say when we're going to complete something. Um, and there's several different little metrics here in this dashboard. Again, uh, we can go back to that program level. And here we are able to see for all of the programs that make up this portfolio, uh, how are we tracking? And again, you can do this at the feature, the epic, or if you're using capabilities, the capability level as well. All right. Keeping on this idea of planning, I want to drop down to the program level. And one of the main things we're doing at the program level is the idea of PI planning. And one of the most useful uh, uh, things and um, uh, kind of immediately useful areas of JIRA Align is really the program board. Give me a second. Um, and the program board is used by teams to really plan out uh, their work for a PI, their features for a PI. It also helps us visualize our objectives, uh, risks, and our um, uh, dependencies for a PI as well. Now, this is an example of a, a program board that has already been filled out. Uh, it is already being used where you can tell based on the date, we are kind of in the middle of our next to last sprint here. Um, but really, whenever we come into using this board for the first time, everything is going to be over here in this idea of an unplanned sprint and maybe even an unplanned team uh, row. What we are able to do is, uh, as we scroll through here, every team is represented as a row, um, and we are able to assign our features to teams. Teams are then able to go through their PI planning process, break their features down into stories that they'll input into JIRA software, link those to the features, all of that syncs over, and then they plan out their features into the sprints. And um, it's really quite a wonderful thing to watch the program board as teams are doing this planning through PI planning because it just starts to fill in so beautifully. Um, we start to add in dependencies, which are uh, represented by these little uh, uh, Chevy icons here. Um, and we're able to easily see where these items are linked. Um, and so as we hover over, you'll notice it starts highlighting, here's a good example, um, the different work items that are linked. So this dependency is related to the feature you see highlighted in the row uh, here, this 3488 feature. Also, the program board has color coding, as you've probably noticed. JiraLine uh, is going to catch several different planning errors here on the program board for you. And if we actually click into these, uh, when we see, uh, I like to use stoplight mentality. So green, blue, gray, we're doing good. Red, orange, yellow. There's something that might be uh, need to we we need to dig into here. It's going to tell you exactly why it is turning a uh, a work item a specific color. Um, and it really just lets you know what data might be missing. And so really the goal through a PI planning process is let's try and make sure we don't have much red, orange, or, or yellow really on the, um, on the program board so that we are accurately doing this planning. All right. Quick check in here. Um, last thing I'll mention, this board might seem a little bit overwhelming at first. Uh, there is a, a legend here in the top right. It's super useful. It breaks down every um, uh, uh, symbol, every shape, every color that you could see on this board. And so I do see that teams get really acclimated to this quite quickly. Um, and the huge benefit that we have of this, you know, the idea of a program board isn't really anything new. Um, it's something teams have been doing for a long time. A lot of times it used to be done on like a whiteboard with a lot of sticky notes and string. And what's great about this is, uh, uh the program board is, um, real time. And so first, the fact that it is digital means that if we are doing PI planning remotely, we are able to all huddle around this tool. Second, it keeps updating in real time. So even as we are going throughout our PI, it turns into more of a report than a planning tool. How are we actually going about completing our work each sprint? Where are we starting to slip? Where are we starting to, uh, or have we added new things into uh, this board that we haven't appropriately uh, planned out? Um, you're able to see all of that here uh, represented on this board. So I often see this board being brought up in things like an art sync, a PO sync, et cetera, to start to track how we are actually going at completing the work. All right. Um, 
In JIRA line, we also have a dependency management module. So something that we hear a lot from organizations that we work with is uh, that it's a challenge to really understand how many dependencies exist, where they exist in our organization. Um, and a tool like JIRA line really does help organizations start to understand that information. So not only can we just add dependencies into the tool, visualize them on the program board, but there's also several visualizations um, uh, like this uh, dependency dashboard that we are able to really start to understand just the breadth of the dependencies that are uh, existing. For those teams and those uh, programs, it's also great because they can toggle between requests that they have sent out versus requests that they have received and where they have some action to take. Um, you can do a lot of customization of what, what columns you see here. And there's even some uh, reports under the reporting module. I'll just show uh, one of the popular ones here. Um, but something like the dependency matrix that starts to show you exactly where do I have these dependencies between which teams. Um, and really when we think about dependencies, typically we're meaning a handoff between teams. And uh, uh, handoffs really just slow us to delivering our solution to our customers uh, typically. And so where we can minimize that, uh, we can often speed up that, that uh, time frame. And so if we have a lot of dependencies between two teams frequently, every PI, uh, maybe there's something we can do with the team members there. Maybe we can shift some people around to help ease that, that handoff process. Um, we also have a risk management module in JIRA Align. So a lot of uh, frameworks support the idea of un understanding risks when we are talking about this plan for a program increment. We're able to create risks in the tool. And JIRA Align does use the ROAM method, which is supported by the SAFE, mo uh, safe framework, um, the idea of marking a risk as resolved, owned, accepted, or mitigated. So we're able to add those into the tool. Um, they We can link them directly to our work items as well, such as our features, as you see here, um, to really understand where are we experiencing risks throughout this uh, PI potentially. Uh, there's also a great report, uh, the Risk Roam Report, where if you are going throughout the roaming process within your PI planning events, this is a great thing to pull up. You're able to drag and drop risks across these categories to uh, uh, really signify how are we uh, going at resolving these risks. Are we accepting a bunch? Are we mitigating? Um, where can we maybe be improving here? Right. Um, so those are really the modules that we see being used mostly for that idea of planning everything from our roadmap uh, down to just tracking our features, planning them out, uh, uh, understanding our risks and our dependencies. Next, I wanna jump into kind of the reverse. How are we able to understand our work? How are we able to uh, uh, see the progress throughout our PIs, throughout our years um, at these various levels? Before I jump into that, I am just gonna uh, uh, briefly talk a little bit more about who we are here at Valiantis. Um, again, we are a Platinum Solutions partner with Atlassian, and we do hold, among others, Atlassian's Agile certification. But really, if it is in the Atlassian ecosystem, we can do it. Uh, we do everything from training to um, uh, uh, implementations um, and uh, business process consulting and even custom development. So if there's a solution that you need that doesn't exist yet, we are able to help you build it. In the JIRA Align world, we do help customers with implementations, reconfigurations, training their user base, working with enterprise insights to create custom reporting, and building custom solutions. Everything from increasing the syncing capability between JIRA and JIRA Align to building a, a custom road mapping tool with customers to really pull in data from several sources, including JIRA Align, we have helped our customers with. I do want to mention one upcoming opportunity for you. So uh, we do have one public training class called JIRA Align Bootcamp. It is really designed for organizations who are uh, interested in JIRA Align. They haven't implemented yet, but they want to get some hands-on experience with the tool. And so we spend the day together in the tool talking about uh, a deeper dive into a lot of the modules you have seen here today and um, also talking about implementation tips and, and best practices that are good to know before you go into an implementation 
implementation. Um, so Brianna's going to throw a link to that in the chat for you. Also, you can use the code VAL20 for 20% off. I believe the next class is on April 24th. Oh, not November 29th. Ignore the date up here at the top. But April uh, 24th, I believe, is our next class. All right. Let's go ahead and jump back into the tool. Thank you for uh, uh, letting me go through that PSA there. All right, so um, now we're gonna kind of reverse and uh, we've done our planning, we understand our risks, our dependencies, et cetera. How can we go about actually tracking this information as we are trying to go through our execution? Um, and we're gonna start here at the program level because that's where I already am. We're going to jump into the program room. As we navigate through the various tiers, it is always going to land us in the room first. Think of a room as just a dashboard for that level of scale. It does work a little bit different than um, a, a JIRA dashboard, if you're familiar with that. It's a bit more pre-configured for us, but it tells us a ton of useful information. I see these rooms being really used in a lot of uh, ceremonies, um, uh, uh, planning activities, etc. Here in the program room, uh, we uh, uh, have some new functionality, actually, that I want to call out. Um, so at the top here, we always see this uh, quick count uh, of our, our planned work for this PI. It does allow us to view one program and one PI at a time in this room. And we have some new functionality around that forecast versus capacity. And so if you have Jira line and you're watching this and you're wondering what that is, uh, you can toggle this on and off currently um, here in the top right. But this came out just uh, a couple weeks ago from Atlassian, really starting to uh, move into that idea of planning with that forecasting tool and also understanding the capacity of our programs and of our teams. Um, and so we're able to toggle again between our feature and our um, uh, epic level. Uh, here we see that example again uh, uh, from before. So this module in particular is very useful pre-PI planning, during PI planning, understanding um, uh, how are we going at that forecasting uh, piece. We scroll down, we can also understand our uh, uh, our capacity versus our load. So uh, this first widget here really focuses on the forecast. What have we planned going into API? Um, and then when we are talking about actually loading the team up with work. So once we've created those work items, applied an estimate to them and assigned them to our program, um, where are we at here? Um, so it looks like we're under, under capacity. So we have some discrepancy here between our forecast versus what we have actually created and estimated in the tool. We can even break that load down into specific teams. So team by team for this PI, how have we loaded them up with our stories? Again, thinking of stories as being created by the teams, estimated by the teams, the knowledge workers of what we are trying to execute here. Um, uh, are they saying that they are overloaded or underloaded for the PI? Once we start getting into the execution, then we can switch into looking at this progress module, team by team, how are we going at completing the work for the PI? Again, it really depends on where we're at in our PI. Um, considering in this example, we were uh, to the next to last sprint, it looks like we're going pretty good at completing most of the work that we have associated in this PI. Um, you can hover over any of these uh, widgets and they often tell you a bit more information, the specific numbers used in the calculation. We can even do some tracking of our dependencies here, understand where we are blocked, what we have committed to, not committed to, et cetera. Um, we can input a planning checklist or a checklist of any kind, helping you guide people through PI planning or specific ceremonies. There's a great calendar here, again, giving us information. How are we going at completing the stories that we have planned into each sprint here? Where, what might we, might we be falling behind? A quick view of our backlog even allows us to just visualize the work that we have planned out into the uh, uh, PI. These are our features. Didn't mean to click on that here. Um, but uh, our features expand to view specific stories, kind of creating a one-stop shop for understanding our work in a PI. Um, overall progress, understanding our risks and our objectives as well. So uh, there's a couple other widgets that uh, you can enable that we don't see as frequently used, but it really is intended to be this one-stop shop of uh, uh, helpful during planning activities as well as post-planning into our execution. 
One of the real highlights of this as well is that you can even dig into a specific team by clicking on the team icon here to see data for that individual team. I see this being most useful during uh, ceremonies like Scrum of Scrums, PO Sync, where you're kind of asking a representative from each team to give an overview of, uh, of how their team is progressing. Um, let's jump into a couple of other uh, visualizations. The work tree is a great visualization uh, that really shows us the full hierarchy of our work, as well as a quick dashboard around our progress throughout the PI. So again, it's a PI by PI view. Um, it has a couple of different options for visualization, but here we're able to dig into all of the epics associated to this program and this PI dig into that epic, into the feature, into the stories uh, visualization and understand the progress. Again, all feeding from the points and the completion of work from that team uh, or from that team working over in JIRA software. So all of that is feeding up here. Um, and you can just keep digging further and further into that full hierarchy. Uh, again, you have a couple of visualization options. Do you want to view this from all of the epics down, or do you want it to bring in all of the stories associated to this PI and show you how it's connected all the way up the uh, hierarchy as well? Um, I'm going to jump back to the portfolio room here, <clears throat> or the portfolio tier, and talk about the portfolio room. The portfolio room can actually be viewed for more than one PI at a time. So I'll make a couple selections here. Um, and it can show you that overall PI progress that you have and it starts to look into those ideas of themes and epics a bit more. So over here on the left, you can go theme by theme to understand where are you at in uh, your scope versus your accepted work um, and how are you uh, uh, going at completing this work. On the right here, uh, program by program, you can see, a, or sorry, portfolio, um, uh, PI by PI, uh, it is going to show you the breakdown of uh, completed work by program. So you get that kind of high level view. Again, if I hover over this, you'll see it's all about story points again. So even though we're talking at the portfolio level, talking about programs, it's really looking all the way down into that team level of stories that are planned versus accepted here. There are a couple of other tabs to the program or to the portfolio room um, talking about your uh, 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 effort distribution on the resources tab. Um, how is your uh, uh, PI load versus velocity looking for each um, of your uh, uh, themes here associated to your programs and your PIs? And there's also the financials tab. So here we're able to see um, uh, how much have we uh, budgeted for each PI? How are we going at uh, um, kind of tracking against that budget? What's uh, our theme budget variance? And uh, for each individual feature or epic here, what's our forecasted, estimated, and accepted spend even? All right. Um, and the last visualization we'll look at is our objective tree. This is a newer visualization uh, that Atlassian has overhauled in, its, uh, 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 in their work to uh, update the objective functionality. Um, but this is where we can start to see those objectives at our various tiers. So again, uh, we can go all the way up into our goals, our portfolio program teams, et cetera. Um, we can do a deeper dive into specific portfolios or programs, specific time periods, um, even into specific owner statuses, et cetera. We have some quick filters here so you can quickly see uh, which have been marked at risk versus off track and completed. And then in the grid here, you can do a deeper dive into your um, objectives. You can expand this to see your objective tree. So again, that idea of parenting your objectives here. You can see the status along with that overall score of that objective, um, your progress for your work items, how many key results you have, time periods, et cetera. You can do a lot to uh, uh, customize what columns you are viewing here now. And this is just another place where we can get that really overview of how are we going at actually accomplishing our goals and our objectives that we have set. So you're able to look at your specific work items in a lot of areas, and then you're also able to look at those objectives that may be um, kind of summarizing what we're trying to achieve with those uh, work items as well. 
Um, so as you can see, JiraLine really is this uh, a, a tool that is designed to help enterprises connect that idea of people, work, and time uh, across our enterprise, help us view our strategy down to our execution, make sure that it is all supporting our, our overall strategy, and help us with a lot of those planning activities at the various levels of scale as well. Um, with our remaining time, we're going to jump into our Q&A. Um, so I will go ahead and pull up the Q&A panel here. All right, um, a question about the roadmap specifically um, on the status. So let me uh, get back into the tool here and jump into the roadmap. Um, so talking about changing the color coding of the uh, uh, specific work items here, which we can mark uh, as uh, uh, done, at risk, et cetera, it changes the color coding. Um, and, and Denise, you're saying that it's not saving uh, that um, color coding for you. Uh, make sure that you're pressing the sync button up here at the top. This is essentially a save button. And what you're actually changing is the health. I know it, it definitely uh, uh, correlates to status, but it's the health here. Make sure that you're pressing sync and that it's saving back. And that should save those um, changes for you. So when you come back, it should still have that uh, uh, color that you set. All right. Um, when forecasting, how are the story points translated to a dollar amount? Um, so the tool does do a calculation for story points. So um, when forecasting, uh, let me actually pull up a specific epic. I'm going to pull up the calculation. Give me just a moment. Oh, yeah. refresh here. There we go. Oh, 1168 is my example. I'm just going to go to that spend tab again and pull up the forecasted spend. And let's look at that calculation here. And so uh, really uh, what it is doing is it's taking your program spend per point, um, which is its own calculation, but it's the rolling average of your normalized team spend per point and multiplying that by your PI forecast. Um, there's a great reference in the documentation if you look for uh, financial um, calculation quick guide, I think it's called, that breaks down all of the calculations because a lot of the uh, 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 calculations that you visualize here in JiraLine are really being viewed uh, or being calculated off of several other calculations as well. And so it gives you a good guide to those. But it's going to be based on really how much are you spending per point uh, typically, which goes all the way down into how many points are we doing per sprint, uh, what is our blended rate for our program, um, or uh, there is the ability to do cost centers and, and more time tracking calculations as well in the tool. All right. Couple more here. Um, am I able to do uh, uh, custom reporting in Jira Align? So Jira Align has a lot of great reports. We looked at several that I would consider reports here, but I will just also show that under each tier of the tool, there is this report section. Um, and there are lots and lots of reports. Now I have all the reports enabled. Um, not all of them are useful for everyone. And also Atlassian is in the process of deprecating several that are just not heavily used. And I completely agree with their list. They're, they're reports that we just don't see being useful for most teams um, and most organizations. So this list is set to change. Um, and uh, I realized I didn't really show clicking into any of these. Uh, that's not really one that I wanna show. Let's look at the process flow cycle time. Um, uh, but as we click into these, uh, they can be quite helpful. Let's see. Whip by state, that's a good one. Um, and I'll also just mention that you are also able to use the help button here to understand any of these. Now, I understand that the question was, are, can you do customized reporting? Um, you can't really change any of the reports that are out of the box outside of changing your context. And what I mean by that is what team you've selected and what time box you have selected. 
Where uh, you can uh, work with custom reporting is through that Enterprise Insights add-on that I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, uh, hour. It is a data lake that connects to Jira Line, and then you're able to connect that to a BI tool of your choice, including Atlassian Analytics, if you have it available to you. And with that connection, you can do really custom reporting on just about anything in Jira Line. Everything really has a data point, and you're able to uh, run your own calculations there. You're able to really get whatever insight you are needing. And that is something that we have helped several organizations with, not only just understanding the Enterprise Insights tool and how you can work with it, but even starting to dig deep with them into uh, how can we create the report that you need um, uh, via that connection. Um, and with Atlassian Analytics, we can even help advise on how to utilize that tool best as well. Um, I think we have time for one more question here. Um, how do you, uh, how good is it how good is Jira Align at catching errors? So um, it's actually really quite, quite good at that. Um, we took a look on the program board already at how it is at catching those planning errors, um, but it's also really great in a couple other areas like the backlog. One of my favorite features to show is the orphan objects module. And what this does is I, I like to say that this is really a data validation uh, a, a part of the tool where it is going to show you any um, work items for your selected program and PI that don't have a parent, so that are not rolling up to, uh, depending on where you're at in the hierarchy, a parent object. So here they aren't connected to a theme at the feature level. It also shows you not connected to a, an epic that don't have an estimate. So especially as you're going into like PI planning, you typically want everything to have an estimate. So you're able to dig into that here um, in theme group if you're using that or release vehicles at the feature level as well. Um, so that's a really great place that it's good at catching errors. And also in the program room, I'll just go ahead and pull that up really quick. Um, in the program room under that backlog module, um, there's this area called misaligned stories and there's another option it can show you called orphan stories. Orphan stories, pretty straightforward. They are stories that do not have a parent. So again, stories that haven't been parented to a feature. Misaligned stories rather are, are um, uh, stories that are uh, assigned to a sprint outside of its parent uh, PI. And so uh, considering we want to typically complete a feature within a single PI if we're planning stories outside of that time period into future sprints or potentially past sprints, then uh, we aren't really following that guideline and we may want to take a look at how we're scheduling that feature. Maybe it needs to be split, et cetera. So lots of areas that it can help you catch those errors. All right. Um, I realize that we are at the top of the hour again. Um, so please do feel free to reach out. My email is here. Uh, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn um, and via our website. If you have any questions on Jira Line or any of the opportunities we've mentioned here today, um, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for uh, attending this webinar.